Hello, John Brewer here. Welcome back to Large Ship Combat 101. Today we're going to be talking about making missile attacks from beyond rocket range. We'll cover the parts of a missile in Space Engineers, the phases of a missile attack, and a little bit about the damage profiles of different warheads. To start, let's define a missile. A missile, for our purposes, is a self-propelled unmanned large ship or small ship intended to make an attack against a target ship, station, or asteroid. To accomplish its mission, a missile must have at least three systems. The first system is propulsion. Usually this propulsion will come in the form of either a set of thrusters or a gravity drive. If a ship is intended as a munition to attack another ship but lacks propulsion, we would call it a bomb, a mine, or a decoy. The next system a missile must have is guidance. Guidance can be as simple as the launch platform firing the missile in a particular direction, or can include search and tracking sensors. The third system is payload. The payload is usually either an explosive warhead, a kinetic impact, or both. Creative engineers might find other payloads for their missiles. Once the missile is ready and a target has been selected, there are four phases of the attack. Pre-launch, launch, cruise, and terminal. During pre-launch, most of the activity is happening on the launch platform. The launch platform is aiming the missile launcher towards the intended target. This can mean either rotating the launcher's turret or aligning the entire launching ship. Once the missile has switched over to internal power and begun to move, it is in the launch phase. The missile will typically accelerate away from the launch platform and toward the target. During the launch phase, any target searching guidance is usually disabled until the missile reaches a safe distance from the launch platform. Once the missile has reached its intended speed, it enters the cruise phase of the flight. During the cruise phase, the missile typically starts searching for a target if it has that capability. Once the missile finds its target, it will generally make adjustments to its flight plan and begin the terminal phase. In this phase, the missile will attempt to actually deliver its payload. This phase usually lasts the remainder of the flight. If the missile fails to make contact with its target or loses acquisition, it will sometimes return to the cruise phase. At the end of the terminal phase, the missile will generally activate its payload, either exploding or otherwise damaging the target. Now that we have the parts and phases of a missile established, let's look at an example missile attack. In this example, we'll be launching our missiles from about 1,000 meters at a stationary target. Normally a missile engagement would be fought at over 2,000 meters, but for illustration's sake, we'll be much closer this time. We'll be firing two missiles with this attack. First, a missile with light armor and an explosive warhead, and then a missile with heavy armor and a kinetic payload. Let's look at the damage profile of these respective missile strikes. Here you can see the explosive warhead tore a much larger hole in the side of the carrier where it hit. There's very little left of the weapon itself, though. Here you can see a cleaner hole where the heavy armor kinetic warhead punched through the hull. Though the surface damage is much lower with the kinetic warhead, it penetrated much deeper into the carrier. There's a lot of experimentation you can do with different missile types. For those who want to learn more about missiles firsthand, see the follow-up Missile Lab video and the workshop links in the comments. Come back next week when we'll be covering gravity-based weapon systems. Thank you all for watching. My name is John Brewer. Come and learn from my mistakes.